is the solution for the problem making a large island. You're given a simple binary matrix and you have to tell the largest island in the grid after applying a particular operation. That operation says of anyone convert that one to a zero and see if it links up sort of uh, multiple big islands and then you'll obviously have the largest possible island. This is sort of the uh, crux of the entire solution. To get to that point, however, we need to uh, take a dive into a simple analogy and I'll explain how components are coming into play. First, let's consider zero as ocean territories, ocean parts. So all of this region in the blue here is marked by zeros. All of the region ones here are islands. These are uh, green areas where there are ones instead of zeros. Now, the central sort of goal of this problem is to have one, say, uh, one variable iterating over all of these water bodies and saying that, okay, where should I place this bridge kind of thing? And in this problem, the solution is placing the bridge right here. But why would you do that in the first place? To understand that uh, and to understand how exactly we are going to implement, we need to understand that each of these cells need some sort of representation. See, well, this bridge is only connecting these two particular cells on the, the right and left of it. These cells are actually part of a larger territory. Again, this cell is a part of larger territory. And so considering and making sort of these representatives of, un, uh, of territories will help us solve the problem easily. Because we know for a fact that even if you are on this cell or this or this or this, all of them have a same leader here. We'll call that the king of the territory. Now, for the ease of implementation, we'll start off initially making everyone as a king. Each of these islands is a king on their own. But if there are two islands that are close to each other, they'll have a battle and they'll figure out who wins by looking at their sizes. So if a king has, say, five pieces of territory and another king has three, the five one will win and convert all of them into eight pieces of territory. The other king will also become a part of this territory and there will be only one king remaining at the very end. Now, the only thing remaining is to implement this. And obviously, if it isn't obvious by now, we are going to use a disjoint set union data structure for this. It's the exact application of what we want, the sizes and who is the king, who is not, is what we're going to use. And it's going to make a lot of sense once we actually implement it. So bear with me. First, let's create the disjoint set union and then we'll talk about the solution itself because it requires sort of this already in place. Cool. So uh, we need the information of who is the king of who, right? We need to be able to look at a particular cell and say that, okay, maybe this cell's king is this guy. This cell's king is this guy, but this cell's king is this guy. Cool. So we need a representation of king as well as sizes when they battle it out. Okay. What else do we need? We need to be able to make kings. This is sort of the initial iteration, uh, the initialization phase where we say each particular one, each particular cell who is one gets to become his own uh, king. So we'll call self.king dot of u equals to u and self dot size of u is also u uh, is also one just because uh, we're starting off with one size territory right uh, then we have another function find king we need to be able to look at a particular cell and say whose king is governing the territory so in this case this would be able to look at this particular cell here the bridge would be able to connect to this cell and this cell would say that my king is this guy. So you go and talk to him. Cool. So how do you do find king? You'll say if uh, self.king of u is equal to u. That means the territory is its own king, which is this guy right here. So the king of this cell is also the king of all of these cells. The king of this cell also is of this itself cell. Sort of like that. It should make a lot more sense once we are done with this implementation. Cool. We'll say if king of u is u, return u. You are the king yourself. 
If that is not the case, however, we want to do something here. And this is called path compression. We'll basically, I'll explain what it means in a second. Cool. Now what we're doing here is called path compression. We're saying that instead of this node pointing to this node and this node pointing to this node, this node then pointing to king, king we can just say this node points to the king directly. So you don't have to travel a long convoluted distance to figure out who the king is. It's just one step away. And this is going to do just that. Once you have found that, uh, return the king. Cool. Now, unite kings. This is sort of battling of the kings who gets to keep the territory. First thing to note is that UV themselves may not be uh, kings. They may not, they may just be individual islanders. We don't care about them, we want kings. So we'll say u, comma v equals to cell blot find king of u and cell blot find king of v. Once we have gotten u and v, we want to say if u equals to v, then you know both are of the same territory, you don't need to fight. So we'll return it there itself. If u is uh, or if self dot size of u is less than self dot size of v u comma v equals to v comma u okay what have i done here i'm saying that if v is of greater size swap u and v and that's because it will make the rest of the implementation simpler we'll say that u is always of the bigger size and if it's not swap it u is now of the biggest size what do we do? Self dot size of u is plus equals to self dot size of v. Sort of u is now consuming the territory governed by v and self dot king of v is u. Or you can alternatively write self dot king of u, which is u itself. So now v, v gives the power to the king u. Good, we're done with the DSU. Uh, now let's create DSU here and here we go. Cool. Um, cool. So now what do we need to know? I will also gra create grid like this and self dot m equals to length of grid. Cool. Once we have both of these variables, we can work with them a lot easier. Now, what happens in the first initialization phase? Each man gets to be his own king. Pretty simple. So we'll say for r n range of self dot n for c n range of self dot n. We'll say if self dot grid r c if that particular element is one, then you get to be your own man. You get to be your own king. DSU dot making making who r comma c uh, this is sort of sneaky if you have noticed in many implementations i saw they sort of flattened out the entire structure in my case i just made dictionary so that it makes a lot more sense and you can obviously have uh, tuples as keys which makes things a lot easier for us cool so now that we have made kings which is the initialization what do we need to do we need to have another sort of iterations for battling what do we do in that? We want to look at if a particular node is there. Okay, if self of, of RC is there. We want to look at all of its neighbors and unite all of these combinations. For that, let's just uh, do wait, pass here. And we'll create another function just to return us neighbors. And what do we need to pass the location? And I'll also give it val equals to now. I'll explain what val means in a second. Good. We have the location, so let's extract RC location. And we'll iterate over all of the possible neighbors. So all of the combinations. So for nr comma nc, which is the new r and the new c, in what? Uh, let's just hard code it. This doesn't affect our results too much. So r plus one comma c, r minus one comma c. Then uh, 
R में सेम C प्लस वन कॉमा R में से सेम C माइनस वन विल इटरेट ओवर ऑल ऑफ देम एंड वी वॉन्ट ऑफ फिगर आउट हु ऑल ऑफ देम आर वैलिड और नॉट सो इफ हाउ डू यू चेक द वैलिडिटी बाय द वे यूल से दैट इफ जीरो इज लेस देन इक्वल्स टू एन आर एंड लेस देन सेल्फ डॉट एन which means that is in valid range so the row are in this valid range not going beyond the matrix not going beyond the grid similarly for columns and zero nc self dot n if both of these conditions are true then you can append it to the answer so we'll have an answer here and we'll uh, return that guy here cool uh will answer dot append but uh, i'm going to add this val equals to none thing just for uh, uh making things a lot easier later on we'll say that if val equals to 1 i want you to check if the grid's value at this particular nr and in c is also equals to 1 uh i'll just make it and here Which is the same thing. If that is true, then you can go ahead and append it to the answer. If not, please don't. So we'll n r comma n c here. Okay, why am I doing this? Uh, uh, value equals to one, and then value equals to zero will also separate out. I'm doing this because again, bear with me. It'll make things a lot simpler down the road, and then we'll do. If val is none, that means it's the default case, and I don't care what the grid is. What's happening here, by the way, is uh, I want to say if val equals to one, you want all of the neighbors with the grid value one. So there could be multiple, like four neighbors, top down, left right, and you want to say that. Okay, get me only those neighbors having one in their place, or Zero or none. In that case, we'll return everything. Makes sense. Uh, pause if you are confused. This is a bit. Uh, this is a long video, actually. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, in the battling part, what do we want to say? This is where this above function will get come in handy because we can say self dot get neighbors. Only those neighbors with their. Uh, Valid locations, uh, valid location, and val equals to one. Because remember that in this case we only made kings to those who were one initially. Only those guys were made kings. By the way, uh, in the first iteration, everyone was king, so they will have this here, this here, all of it. Fine. And. we only want to uh, look at all of the neighbors having value one because if there is a c surrounding that particular king then we don't really need to battle it out with other neighboring kings so this will return a list of all of the places where there is a king and so for neighbor in cell dot neighbors what do we do what do we do for what We've gotten the neighbors. Okay, now let's battle it out. We'll say dsu dot unite or is it like unite kings? The current neighbor and the r comma c. Cool. Uh, once we're done with the battle, the only thing left to do is find the answer. So we'll start off with negative infinity and we'll return the answer. And we'll say for r in range of seven or ten. Again, the same thing. Cool. Now we have access to everything. The DSU is ready to go. Uh, sorry about the light. Cool. The light is back finally. Ah. Uh, so where were we? Right. Okay. Let's find the answer now. So, for a particular node, for a particular RC, first you need to know if not self dot grid RC. 
uh, this means that the current node is zero. It's a C line. Uh, it's a C place. So things like this nodes in between all of these islands. And we want to say, okay, what of that? Get me all of the territories that surround it, but first get me all of their kings. So we'll find out who the kings are. King for okay. How can you actually get the kings? You don't have access to the kings, right? You only have access to its neighbors. So let's actually get all of its neighbors. Let's say self dot get neighbors. Of wait, I have a past self here. Just need need to pass here. Yeah, my bad. We need to pass the current R and the C. And we'll say uh, val equals to one. Only get me no those neighbors which are not C. And we'll say for neighbors in self dot get neighbors val equals to one. Okay. Of these neighbors, get me their kings. Get me get me their representations. DSU dot king of neighbors or let's call it neighbor in this guy. Good. Once we have gotten the kings, what do we do? Uh, there may not be uh, unique kings. First, we need to check, okay, if like one territory is the only thing that's surrounding that particular C. So uh, we need to get a list of set of kings. Good. Now of these kings, what do we want? These are unique kings surrounding that territory, which this particular zero to one conversion will help bridge the gap. So what do we do now? Um, we'll say answer equals to maximum of the current answer and the sum of what? Of all of uh, sizes of the kings they have. So dsu dot size of king for king and kings. Cool, this should do it. Let's do a sanity check. DSU has no attribute size. Okay, size here. Wrong answer. Okay. Oh, one more thing. I know it shouldn't be. Oh yeah, got it. So when we're converting that zero to one, we have to consider this territory itself. And there's one more thing I missed. If answer equals to equals to negative infinity, if that particular territory, uh, if that particular math only has ones, the answer would never uh, be a positive value. It would just be negative infinity. So if it's negative infinity, all of them are ones. So we'll return. We'll keep that as the answer. Cool. I'm hoping it works this time. By the way, the runtime is pretty bad. Uh, the runtime of DSU and space complexity of DSU is a bit complicated, but you can see that we have three order of n square. Oh my God, there's a wrong answer there. Fine, I'll pause the video and I'll get back to you. Uh, yeah, I think I caught the problem. We didn't do find king here. We just did king instead. So this should fix it. I'll go submit again. I'm hopefully this doesn't screw up again. Cool. So labeled hard, but it's pretty easy once you understand DSU structure. And then it's just implementation. It's just too many lines of code, but the logic is very simple behind it. Cool. Uh, if you want my approach, uh, I've put it out here. Uh, you can read the write up if you want. And uh, that's it.